What's up, gang? What's up with it? Live. Boom. Alrighty. Let's see. What's up? Run through some setup. See if there's anything that we can swing. Looking for a swing, baby. All right, let's get live for everybody on TikTok, gang, gang. Alrighty. Made a pretty bag today, baby. And I'm uh. I'm up about 4.5k on this SU swing. Still have not taken any profits. Training. Still no profits taken. I talked about this with Team Bull earlier, but we can talk about it. I took two, actually two really nice trades today. Uh, the one I wasn't able to call out because others were short in team bull but you guys had my levels from this morning's watch list so there's no excuse why nobody could have caught it so if we uh, uh let's see let's uh let's clean this up real quick clean this up there we go and then let's see what bounce volume Stochastic slow boom. So if you guys remember from this morning's watch list, uh, we talked about the NQ and QQQ bounce, right? So if we go to the four hour time frame, we can see from uh what was it, Wednesday? Wednesday's low, right? We have this nice low point right here before a strong aggressive move up. So we talked about the possibility even in last night's live stream. So we talked about it last night, we talked about it this morning about the bounce at the 61.8% retracement. What was the exact low of day today? The 61.8. So again, unfortunately, couldn't call that out in Team Bull because others were short, didn't want to confuse everybody, but you had my levels. So we came down, we get the volume spike off the key level right here, and we close above it. We have just as much volume as the opening candle right off that 61.8. Go long, stop loss right below here. I caught a very nice move up on this. Unfortunately, didn't catch all that but a very nice move up. So hopefully you guys were able to catch that. And then day trade number two, uh, these contracts went from 60, I think to a high of 1.05. This one I was able to actually call out in Team Bull. So looking at IWM, uh, remember this is on the, the um, weekly watch list. So I was watching it anyway, and it was part of the watch list this morning. Uh, I wanted to see a pullback closer like 204.30, but that's okay. Price had a very strong aggressive move up, take pivot low, pivot high. We got in as price started to react off of that 61.8% retracement. Pull up the signal inside of Team Bull. And we're gonna talk about that SU. So inside of Team Bull right here, uh, in IWM calls at 1046, which was this candle right here, one minute after this candle opened. And we were able to catch a beautiful move to the upside. Again, contracts went from uh, 0.6 all the way to a high of like 1.05. So whatever that percentage return is, I think like, what, 60, 70%? But yeah, beautiful trade. And then SU finally hit the 50%. Unfortunately, not unfortunately. I haven't trimmed yet, right? I was about to say, unfortunately, I don't know why because I'm aiming for a much higher price target on this. But with SU, right, we got in at the end of last month's close. So at 34.3, this doesn't look like a huge move, but we've captured about a 7% move on this stock. Contracts are up a little over 50% now, I believe. And I think it wants to go higher. Again, I'm up about 4.5K on this position and have not trimmed at all. I'm a little heavier on this, but I honestly think that I could make probably about 10K on this swing if it does exactly what I want it to. So, gonna be patient. I'm gonna let this play out. Probably, 
I'll probably have my stop loss now probably around like 25%. That way I'm still guaranteed around like $2,200 profit. But, or like 2K, whatever. But yeah, I think, uh, I think we get more out of this, especially... I want to watch this monthly candle close because if we can get more volume than last month, I would love that for more upside. That's what's up, Thomas. Nice. SU. It's a oil stock. And remember, we talked about oil. If you guys are looking for strength in the future, it's in oil. CL. USO. I believe Chevron. Uh, not Chevron. What was the other one we were looking at? There's a bunch of oil names that look super, super bullish, but SU was my favorite setup in the oil and energy sector. So, yeah, hopefully you guys took advantage of that. And like I said to everybody in Team Bull, you don't have to follow me when it goes for trims. Make sure you guys are trimming out. But like I said, I really want to let this thing try to move before I start trimming. Because I feel like this could be possibly my biggest trade in a minute. So, I'm going to let it run. Squeeze the stops. Anyways. Let's, uh, let's run through some scanners. See what we like. See what is popping up. Let's see. I do want to run through this weekly watch list real quick again, though. See, see if there's anything good. I do, we're watching silver at the end of this week. That ARM from earlier too. Unfortunately, we couldn't trade it. So from the morning watch list, I said I was watching for that break of 137. And I said in Team Bull, I wanted to see it come back down and retest that level for longs. It just, it literally opened on top of it. It just nuked all the way up to 143.75. And then from there, I was watching it here. Couldn't get an entry because they kept playing with the spreads. The spreads would go 40, 50, 60 wide. And then as it moved up, they would tighten again. And then as soon as you were getting ready to click the buy button, they would get wide again. So it was like, okay, let's not, you know, let's not even bother trying to take this. So unfortunately could not take that arm, but exploded. If anybody caught it, congrats. But I, I honestly think it was more. Might, uh, hmm. Kind of wanted to try a lotto, but. A little expensive for a lotto. What do we got room to? 164. Let's look at the 150s. Uh, they're trading at 143. Possibly in debit spread. I mean, a 150, 155. I don't know. Maybe with this arm. But, yeah, arm looks really good. I would continue to watch that for the rest of this week. Yeah, I saw that MU pop too. It looked like it had a one hour bull flag that started to uh, break out and move. But, all right. Arm still looks good. We're going to continue to watch that. CRWD, like I said earlier, possibly a 340, 350 spread. I'm not 100% sure yet. It just really depends. Uh, so, going to continue to watch that. And then that was really all I had for swings. Let's run through. Let's run through the swing setups that I liked. My cat's being a pain. She keeps trying to jump up. All right. Uh, KKR. D. Honestly, I don't. Oh, uh, PG. I wanted to watch PG this week as well. But it looks like this is where I would have looked for it to bounce. Maybe if we got a daily candle close above there. But not uh not in love with that. Can you day trade every day without yes, uh open up a cash account on Think or Swim. Or I think Weebull has cash accounts. Um Tastyworks and Interactive Brokers. Just cash account on any any of those. You should be good. See, think or swim dropped cash accounts. I don't think that's true. I don't 
believe so. No more cash accounts since Schwab. Schwab. I don't know. I haven't heard of that. Are you 100% sure? Can anybody else confirm that? Anybody else confirm? Somebody else said false. I have a cash account on Schwab. I have a cash account. False. I'm seeing a lot of falses. I don't think that's true. I have a cash account still. Seeing a lot of falses. Are you fibbing? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, all right. Amazon. Still watching that daily squeeze again with for a pullback arm that's in a daily squeeze Uber. Possibly if it pull back to 78. We can watch that. Carvana. That's still on the watch list. Again, would prefer a pullback. Speaking of interactive brokers, that actually hit the scanner. And does not look bad. Got the buy signal over there. Let's see, you would stop out below 107.3, we're trading at 109, so what is that, like two bucks you're risking? A little overextended on the three day, pretty overextended on the weekly. Huge bullish engulfing candle, however, very light volume. Hmm. BKR. It could move. Okay, he said he was wrong. Okay. <laughs> uh, IBKR could move. Just not not a big fan of the higher time frames. Three-day, weekly, monthly, all saying that it's overbought. So we're just going to skip over that. Maybe something that we can watch in the future. If it Maybe if it gets like better structure, then... That could validate a trade, but again, not like a huge fan of what we're seeing. And then we had WTW. Tell me about gold. Sell or buy. Let's see. Oh, look. What is this? Willis Towers. It's actually a pretty decent setup. Only issue is we don't have the buy signals yet. However, very good liquidity in the 280s. Trading 280s are literally trading at $280. Huh. All right. Uh, looks like we got like a weekly bull flag. We're holding. That's the all time high. We're holding it. Yes. 271.87. So our stock would be, let's see, it's trading at 274. You'd be risking about three bucks, which would be. Plus ten dollars a day to theta. Thirty six times three is gonna be. I have no idea. One oh eight. One eighteen. One oh eight. It's right the first time. Um. So let's see if it costs two hundred eighty dollars. You're risking one hundred eight. Whatever that is in math terms. Percentage loss. Um. And then honestly, your upside. I just don't like how we got this buy signal and that on balance volume is trending lower. That's the only issue. So again, maybe it's something that we continue to watch for a little bit, but our upside we're risk or aiming for what four and a half dollars, and then after that we're aiming for two eighty one six two two eighty five. I mean, yeah, I like the setup. We can put it on the list. It's just I would like to see. We can look at bonds too. We'll take a look at uh gold and bonds here in a minute. But I would like to see this WTW 
get something better on the indicators. Like I like that we're holding this structure. It looks good. It's just a sell signal and then lower on balance volume. It's typically not what I look for when it comes to a swing. So we'll see the WTW. Just need a couple more things on that. But let's take a, let's take a look at gold real quick for you. GC. And again, how's everybody's day going? Hope everybody's having a good day. Hope you guys made money. I mean, the main setup on gold was here when it broke that wedge. But as long as it holds the previous all-time high, it's really going to depend on the month of close. So, I want to see, actually. Because I know this was huge resistance. 2089, did we ever come back and test it? Kind of. Honestly, with gold, I'd be very interested if it came back down to 28 or 2089. But you could also watch that daily 21 EMA because it's been almost a month since we tested it. So like 2142, 2143, depending on where it is. Uh, when price pulls back. So that's personally what I would watch on gold. Stock market news. Um, I just follow a bunch of people on Twitter. Main one is Financial Juice and Zero Hedge. Uh, Tradecraft. If you're wanting to hop back into Team Bull, if you're on the list... For the webinar that I'm doing next Monday, I'm going to be opening spots for people uh, that want to join Team Bull in that webinar that I'm doing. So make sure you join that. Give a little discount code too. What else we got? Oh yeah, let's run through this other list. <laughs> Team Good old Tiva. Last time we traded that, we hit a banger on this. I don't even remember when it was. Must have been like a year ago. Or no. It was literally right here. This day right here. And we caught it. It's around like 960. And we caught it all the way up. I forget where we ended up exiting, but got a really nice move out of it. Mm hmm Here is the link to the webinar that I'm doing. Absolutely. I can give it to you. Veil. Good old Veil. I remember trades I took on that back in the day. There you go. Can't miss it. Posted a bunch. All right. Carvana we looked at. Lily we looked at. WTW we looked at. The Russell we know is in a squeeze. And CLH. I mean, maybe if it pulled back, but yeah, let's get it. I don't know if we looked at this one. No, that one's gone. Okay, let's run through the monthly scanner, see if anything picks up, and then I guess we'll just look at ES and SPY, and I'll answer any questions you guys got. I just got to leave around like 315, 320, take my cat to the vet. So, and real quick, everybody that is watching on TikTok, Make sure to also check out my YouTube channel, Brandon Trades. I'm super close to 75K subscribers. So it would be greatly appreciated if you guys head on over to the YouTube channel, Brandon Trades, 74.8. 976 videos teach you on how to trade. Plus, I go live there every single morning. Whoops, there's my face for you all. <laughs> but I go live there every single morning, every single Sunday, give you guys a weekly trading watch list, plus going live in the afternoon, looking over charts with you guys, so... You can have Brandon Trades on YouTube. Link is in the bio. Or head on over to YouTube and just type in Brandon Trades. Uh, I think so, but you're going to have to reach out to Jadon. Let's get this monthly scanner rolling. And guess what? It's literally all oil. Besides XME. Look at all that. CMQ, XLE, Exxon, MRO, COP, Oxy, SU, USO. 
I think that's all the oil. Crude oil futures, but literally a bunch of oil names on this thing. I'm telling you guys, if you're looking for strength in the future, it's in oil. So let's pull up that monthly. Yeah, XLE, that's going. Beautiful monthly squeeze. Looks like it wants to fire up and possibly go back up and test these highs. Monthly 21 EMA, buy signal, squeeze, boom. XLE looks good. XOM, same thing. Structure, GM. Not a fan of that one. MRO. That's possibly just going to go. COP. Same thing. Same exact structure. Oxy. Mm, that would have been really good at the end of last month. I mean, technically it's not too late. It's just it's up, already up a decent bit. Your stop would be below that 21 EMA though. So you're risking about like five bucks to possibly make 12 if it wants to go back up to that high. Just a little more allocated to SU. So I don't want to put on uh, too much size and oil. Let's see, XME, don't really care about that right now. AEM. I think AEM is a, I want to say that this is a gold stock, gold miner. I remember correctly. Let's see. Who said I wasn't in crypto? Just buy Bitcoin and Ethereum. Me chilling over here with my almost 800% gains on my one account. Buy and hold. Literally, it's all you got to do. CNQ, that's going. I think we talked about that one a while ago. Oh, that's another oil company, Ball, whatever the hell that is. TK. No idea what this is. We're not touching that. That's a very ugly monthly chart. Yeah, I mean, really not. A lot of volume on SPY right now. It's pulled up. Because we're just sitting between a buy and a sell zone on SPY. Here's our buy zone. Here's our sell zone. Looks like we've been sitting there for a little bit. But. Uh, 21 EMA. Yes. Here's the thing, though. This is my honest opinion on altcoins. I saw it a lot in the last one. People make a lot of money off of it, but then they end up losing all of it. That's just what I've seen. Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't going anywhere. Altcoins, however. Go zero very quick. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. All right. But yes, 21 EMA is the white dotted line. Um, I mean, honestly, I'm not like a huge fan of setting daily goals because, you know, if you didn't catch that QQQ earlier and, you know, say you have a, a goal of doing 1.5% on your account today and you got 0.7%. Well, the market has not offered you any opportunity to trade today in this entire range. So you sit there, you force trades, and then, you know, you end up losing your profits from earlier just not not a huge fan of having those goals um honestly the way i trade is i just take what the market gives me so some days i might lose money some days i might break even some days i might make a little money some days i might have a very large day right again just going back to the seo i'm holding this thing it's up fat I'm just holding it's already past my expectations, but I think it's going to give me more. I'm going to just trade the price action and take what it gives me. If it comes back down to 20, 25% profits and stops me out, okay, that's what it gave me. But again, just take what the market gives you. I don't really, I don't really like to set those goals. I think it does more damage than good. Yeah, I haven't really traded futures much. Got slapped 
on Futures, not this past FOMC, but the previous FOMC, whenever, right before I went to Colorado. Really haven't traded Futures since that. A little PTSD. But also, in my honest opinion, when it comes to Futures, I just feel like it's better for scalping, especially because I'm not doing a funded account. I'm literally trading with my own money. So I'm not doing five NQs. I'm doing one or two NQs and then one, two, maybe three ES. So I can't really catch like a, a huge move in the futures compared to the options where I can size up here. Scale out of the position more, move stops up more. All right, well, does not look like SPY or ES is really doing much. So, y'all got any questions? Preguntas? When do you know where the top is during a bull run? Uh, you just follow the trend until the trend reverses. You never really know where the top's gonna be. Oh yeah, if you saw my PL the one day of, uh, not this past FOMC, but the previous FOMC. It's not a happy, not a happy camper. Not a happy camper. What questions we got? But yeah, literally just follow the trend. Is this? Sorry, I'm just reading the team bull chat. Okay. Uh, when going through and just finding setups for the day, I just go through this. Spy and QQQ are always a staple. That's something I watch every day. Those are uh, just the reliable names. But this is just everything I flipped through. A couple of these, or a few of these are just on here, just so I don't forget to look at them. Uh, like Net, that's something that I try not to forget to look at. Uh, IWM, it's rare that I trade it, but if the setup is there, like today, I'll take it. And I mean, the main reason it's on my list because we have that daily squeeze. Same thing with CRWD. I just don't want to forget to look at it. Um, but yeah, literally, ES, SPY, QQQ are the, the main things that I watch every day. And then, you know, maybe there might be a setup on Coin or maybe a setup on Google because we traded Google uh, or didn't trade Google. We uh, watch Google on Friday. So I'll flip through this, find three to four total, two of them being SPY and QQQ, and then one or two individuals. That's it. Super simple. Uh, let's see. Intel Weekly. INTC. Came down to that. What is this? Why do I have that drawn there? Oh, I guess I drew a monthly fair value gap on this. Um... But again, we talked about the, the 61.8, 51.72. Pivot high, pivot low. So price wants to go higher. One, it's either going to bounce this monthly fair value gap. But two, it's got to crack 51.72. So we literally like came right up to that fib. I don't know if we hit it. No, 50 cents away. But now we're all the way down from 51.30 all the way to 40. Imagine if you shorted that. <laughs> what else we got on the training uh when i'm when i'm using fibs i'm only looking for rejections or bounces i'm not looking to trade it if it breaks it only watching for a bounce or reject what's up mike
And I didn't get burned on futures. I'm still profitable on the futures account. It's just, I don't know. It, sometimes it gets hard to manage. And what I mainly didn't like is having to have a, a trade abate window open as well. Because typically I just do everything on Thinkorswim. It's all on one screen. So I didn't really ha like having to look at a different screen to do the orders. That was the main thing that I didn't like. But yeah, again, that's just my honest opinion on futures was uh, the main thing being not able to capture the whole move. But still took decent amount of uh, profits out of the account. Just those two days, man. PTSD. Never trade NQ during FOMC. Especially getting stopped out. 80 points. You guys can do the math. 80 points, $20 a point on two contracts on NQ. So, that was not fun. Uh, do I trade Disney? Not really. Very rarely. Keep the questions coming. Unless you guys are good, I'm good. I'll go make content before I gotta leave. But if you guys want me to stick around, stick around for 10 more minutes. You guys tell me. Y'all let me know. Sure, stick around. <laughs> stick around. Enjoy yourself. But yeah, not really too much going on. There's one key area I'm watching this week. It's this 52.56 to 52.47 on NQ, or not NQ, ES. Uh, that's a candlestick. Sure. Your spy calls. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't personally wouldn't be trading this right now. This terrible price action. Terrible. But it'd be like that sometimes. Also, it's a short week too, so you just gotta keep that in mind. And GDP is Thursday, I believe. Wednesday or Thursday, we have the revision. So we could be a little slow going into GDP. Uh, like a liquidity sweep. Yeah, maybe I'll like watch a liquidity sweep, but most of the time it's just watching the levels. My key areas. Fibs, supply and demand, support resistance. That's really the main way that I'm finding levels. <laughs> Got a lot about the fibs. Talk about them in my book, uh, The New Age of Day Trading. And I have an hour-long video on my channel teaching you about the FIBs. And I'm doing that whole webinar on FIBs on Monday, next Monday. I guess you could do micros. I don't know. I just, overall, from somebody who tried to make that full transition over to futures, I still like options a lot more, just personally. Let's see, any other questions? No, I'm gonna go make a, make a TikTok real quick before I got a dip.
day trader shares another insane secret. <laughs> Thank you, AFG. But yeah, we're still just sitting in the zone between two levels. Just chilling. Really not too much going on. But, cool. I think I'm going to just call it here. How long have we been live for? Yeah, we've been live for almost 40 minutes. So, yeah, we're going to wrap it up. But if you guys are in Team Bull, just continue to keep your eyes on the swing tab. I'll keep you guys updated with SU. And mainly, the only other swing I really want to watch right now is the CRWD. Just not a... Not a hundred percent sure yet, but we're gonna watch it. So, everyone have an amazing day. Again, trade safe, trade smart. If we don't get any other setups today, what are we gonna do? We're gonna walk away, <laughs> right? Hopefully, it's nice outside for you guys. You can just go outside instead. But make sure you guys tap in tomorrow, eight a.m. Eastern time. I will be live. Again, make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. We're super close to 75K, so it would mean the absolute world to me. Other than that, have a good one. I'll talk to everybody tomorrow. Peace.